You know, I was with Mario Murillo and Todd Coconato, and Mario put out a blog that is incendiary. He's calling out, again, specific names and leadership that is compromising the church in serious ways. And so we're going to get into that show. I wanted to talk about that. So he's hosting this uh, little uh, segment of uh, conversation on what's happening in America, what's happening in specific places, churches, and, and you don't want to miss it. And uh, when I think about, this isn't a pillow fight. This is a war we're in. But when I think about pillow fights, I think of Mike Lindell. I was just with Mike last week. And you know, Mike, uh, Mike says, Lance, they're trying to put me out of business again. They're trying to cut off my line of credit. They got me down to like, well, I'm back on Fox. And somehow he told me how he got back on Fox. He's a character. Well, I want you to go to MyPillow.com and support this Patriot brother. Use promo code Lance. I got something set up where I got as much as like 40% off on some of these products. And particularly, check out the 2.0 cooling technology on the pillow. You know, I hate it, Len. I wake up at night, you know, sometimes my, uh, on, the, on the road especially, and my, I feel the heat coming off my head. And I got to wake up and I flip the pillow over. It's cool. How about a pillow that has cooling technology? Only Mike Lindell could come up with that. MyPillow.com, promo code Lance. Get a discount off it and just try it. I believe you'll like it. And then get into this wild ride. Strap yourself in, put your seatbelt on because we're going to go on some bumpy terrain. You're going to love it. Well, this is Firepower. Tonight, we are going to get into Woke Jesus versus the real Jesus. And you are gonna to wanna to stay tuned and share tonight's broadcast. We're gonna talk about a church, if you wanna call it that, that kicked a Bible during their service like it was a football, I kid you not. And then we're gonna get into the He Gets Us commercial that was on during the Super Bowl, a lot of discussion around that. And then we're gonna talk about Romans 13, what you need to know about what it actually means. You're gonna hear Mario's take and our special guest tonight, Lance Wallnow, who's gonna be joining us in just a few moments. And then there was a, a pastor's conference where the leader that was up there actually told the preachers not to get involved in politics. This is very dangerous. We got to have this discussion. Mario, you just wrote a blog about some of these subjects. What do you think about yes. this, Mario? Well, yeah. and, and the idea is that uh, we can't talk about it. And it, it's a bit of denial because they don't know the age we're living in. And so... Knowing the age that we're living in and what's going on, I can't think of anyone better in the whole world than my friend Lance Wall now. So I want to welcome him on the show before we get any further in this conversation. Thank you, Lance, for being on with us. Uh, Glad to be here. Yes. So let's let's begin. How dangerous is this moment that we're in where large denominations and people with a lot of money are pushing the body of Christ into silence, compromise, and indifference. And, and in my sense, I believe also confusion. So if you'll speak to that for a moment, and then we've got some video that we want to show, but go ahead. If you blindfolded me right now and just asked me to put my spiritual antenna up and say, what is this moment like? It reminds me of when the uh, White House... And Fauci was talking about shutting down the church and quarantining and sheltering in place because uh, it was for if you love people, you're going to do this. And pastors throughout America and Christians thought about it and said, I do care about people. I'm nervous about what's going on. We won't meet in church. And then meanwhile, the, the strip clubs and some of the stores were opened up and the churches were still shut down. And that seemed odd. And then when we come out of it all, we look back and find out that the social distancing was a fallacy, the, sh the lockdowns were not necessary, and the Supreme Court with uh, Justice Gorsuch was waiting for a Christian to stand up and challenge a governor who was making him shut down. And the moment he had the case, he sided with the church saying, this is serious overreach. It's the fear that makes that I feel in the atmosphere that is causing Christians and Christian leaders to look for a justification to avoid controversy. And it's that streak of fear that is being manipulated now by voices of evangelical reason that are using different arguments to shut down and shelter in place, only shelter your mouth and stay out of politics. 
So there was an event in Florida just a few days ago in which some of the top pastors of a denomination met and a very famous expert on leadership told them to stay out of politics. When I wrote about it, and you'll see it at mariobarilla.org, the organizer of the event immediately retaliated and said, no, nothing you've said is true. However, the transcripts of that speech in which the pastors were told not to get involved in politics, not to be divisive, not to be uh, uh, polarizing. Uh, and so I wrote about it and I stand by everything I wrote, Lance, I stand by it all. And I believe it's alarming that this is happening right now. And, and so what I wanna do is uh, show you a video in just a second of how pastors are being told do not do not mention politics. Don't come out against abortion. Do not speak to the issues and the crisis that people are going through. But what you can do in church is what you're about to see. A Sunday morning service on Super Bowl Sunday where the theme is so garish. I understand wanting to relate to people, but, but I mean, this is so over the top that I, I don't even want to describe it. I want you to see it, and then we'll all comment on it later. So let's roll it right now. It's time to meet our players. Let's head down to the field for today's starting lineups. The myth, the legend. Just call it when it lands. Call it in the air. Tails! What I'd be kicking. It, uh, yeah, let's just go with tails. Would you like to kick or receive the Bible? I will receive. Tome wins the toss, chooses to receive the Bible. Patterson back with the kick. Oh my goodness! Whoa. Is that a touchback? Can you yeah, even get a touchback? First time in eight a touchback for the kickoff. Okay, I just want to, I'll, I'll set the stage, uh, and I admit I'm trying to be an agitator right now. The word of God was punted like a football in a church, okay? And I would, I'm sure that the, the seeker model is going to come up with a million explanations, and you don't get it, and it's not like you think. And, uh, okay, so let's leave it right there a Bible was punted into the audience. And th this is interesting because that is literally what they were doing. Taking the word of God down to the point of being a, a prop in a skit and one that is kicked. There it is. So gentlemen, I'll start with you, Todd. What is your reaction yeah. to that? Yeah, it reminds me of that movie. Remember they say, are you not entertained? You know, it's like you come to a church service to get fed the word of God. You come to a church service to learn. Instead, they're going to church service. First of all, somebody spent way too much money on entertainment in this church. I mean, they got smoke and lights and all these different things. I can imagine that city has a bunch of people that are in need that need to hear the gospel. And somebody is misprioritizing as far as I'm concerned. But I just, Mario, th this is what's wrong with the whole situation. That, that's about the only Bible they're probably going to get in that morning service is, is to see the Bible kick. How sad is that? And I have to tell you, if I was there, I probably would have got up and walked right out of that place. But, you know, uh, this is what people see when they see the American church. And this is why we're in this situation. And later on, we're going to talk about this Super Bowl ad that just came out. He gets us. And what we've really found in, in, the, in the blowback from this is that there are two different groups of Christians right now in this country. And this is this is the seeker friendly group, those that are willing to hear the greasy grace and come in and just get entertained. And then those that are seek the other group are the remnant, those that are seeking that hunger and thirst for righteousness, that want to stand by the word of God, that realize we're in a major epic battle for the heart of this nation. And that literally we have an urgency in our spirit because everything is on the line. So you got people that are being entertained over here. And then you got people that understand and discern the times over here. It's a very stark difference. And there's no fence sitting right now. 
You know, and and so I want to ask uh, Lance a question. That's a good answer, Todd. Uh, the question is that we are living in a time where there's been a resurgence. And what it is, people are feeling patriotic. People are feeling that their nation is being stolen. They realize that we're trying to send billions of dollars to secure the border in the Ukraine, but not in the United States. We have an immigration problem. We have now, I just read today, it is official in the city of San Francisco that there are now more drug addicts in San Francisco than there are high school students. Uh, okay, that's where I went to high school. That's where I went to school. That is a towering, staggering statistic. The world's, the nation's falling apart, the fa fabric of our morals. So the rising tide of the Christian voice that we're feeling in this hour is, how can we remain silent in the face of all of this? So it's almost like a dam is going to burst. And what's holding back the waters of revival, if you will, is a misconception of Romans 13, that we're supposed to remain silent in the face of evil, when in fact, Struggling against government has been the norm throughout the ages, and we'll see that in the Bible. But Lance, I want you to comment on the, the idea that the church should remain silent because of its view of Romans 13. Well, you know, first of all, I, I had not seen the Bible kickoff thing, so I'm still processing what I was looking at. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't realize that was a church that was doing the Super Bowl Sunday. Were they doing Super Bowl together and watching it together as a church? Or, I mean, I was thinking, can you imagine? Here's what's really sad. I could not mm. imagine a Muslim kicking the Quran. Thank you. No. So it, it, it's a statement as to the value of the sacred. And sacred is a real idea. Uh, the sacredness of marriage, the sacredness of life, the sacredness of the Word of God, and I, I just, I think that it's a, uh, I, what, what strikes me as I'm watching that, I got to go there because I got to process this. Yeah. Was there no one on staff, no one who wasn't saying to themselves, is that really a good idea? I mean, it's kind of like, that, that's the kind of stupid idea, which one guy comes up with is maybe in charge of the, the, the teen ministry, who gets crazy ideas. And the pastor says, no, we're not going to do that, Charlie. But I mean, that happened. It happened. And so now that it's happened, all I can say is that church has a spirit in it that does not have the fear of the Lord. Whatever is preached that filled that place and somebody's doing a good job of marketing, it does not have a conscience towards the reverence of God or you wouldn't be able to pull that kind of, 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 a, of a show off. And, uh, and as far as the voice of the church, here's my encouragement. I've never been more certain than now that there, when I listen to the people that are in the churches versus a lot of the leadership that will listen to uh, don't get political, the people have more sense than the leaders. There's an awakening that's already started. There's a whole, uh, in, in other words, there's a, there's a large number of Americans who have an instinctive, intuitive sense of the danger the country's in, and an unwillingness to be silent. And what's weird is Russell Brand and Joe Rogan and Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk are doing a more courageous job of discerning the times and taking a stand against Disney or uh, interviewing Putin. or so They're doing what they can do to get into the line of fire and say, there's something bigger going on here than just my career. I need to take a stand. I think that the church ought to be challenged by that. Yep. And I think that one of the things uh, that we're going to see in a moment is a video by uh, with Glenn Beck interviewing a, a, pa a pastor from the state of Washington named Josh McPherson, Grace City Church. And he's going to say something about what Lance just mentioned. And I, I want to set it up because we have so much to do tonight that I want to make sure we get to it all. And I got so many questions I need to ask. In this video, you'll see one of the finest explanations of what Romans 13 originally meant and where the church needs to be. So 
we're going to roll that tape right now, and then we're going to talk about it. There's a, a, a mainline theme you could tie through scriptures where like one of the key tensions that's driving the story is the people of God in tyrannical government. Moses, Egypt, Daniel, Babylon, Esther, Persia, Paul, Rome. They murdered Paul because they deemed him a threat to public health and safety. And so what I see pastors doing is they, 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 take, the, they take Romans 13 and then they go, I need to contextualize this, so we got to obey the government. And what they miss is they disconnect the writing of Paul in the epistles from the life of Paul in the book of Acts. And when you disconnect the writings of Paul from the life of Paul, you miss the message of Paul. So the same guy that said, honor the, the emperor, spent the last 10 chapters of Acts suing the government, calling them out, preaching the gospel, and they finally cut his head off. Hmm. When, uh, when I came to this revelation, Lance, and I'm, I'm going to have you comment on this. I was told by God to do a tent crusade during the COVID lockdown in California. And I said to the Lord, I'm breaking the law. And God said, no, you're not. You have to obey the highest law of the land. And what a lot of people don't remember, Lance and Todd, is that the highest law of the land in America is not the laws that are written locally or the laws that are written even federally if they don't jibe with the Constitution. God revealed to me that Gavin Newsom had broken the law by telling me to be quiet and by forbidding Christians to worship together. Yep. And when I realized that, that I wasn't being a rebel, I wasn't being an outlaw, I was obeying God. In Romans 13, it says that the governments that are from God or endorsed by God do not impede goodness, but they are there for our protection. Our government is supposed to be protecting us. And so do we submit to the American government in its current form? No, it is a rogue government. It is fighting God, fighting truth, fighting the word of God, and it is clearly doing the opposite of what the Constitution uh, said. It said, for example, we, we believe that these rights are, that we are endowed by our Creator by inalienable rights. All right, then it says life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Then it says that those who are governed, governed, that, that God put it on us to make sure those rights are protected. So when those rights are not protected, it no longer is constitutional. And at that moment, the law of God trumps the law of man. And that's why hiding behind Romans 13 to stay quiet is unscriptural, and it's actually a violation of the righteousness of God. There you go. So, Lance, I'm going to throw it to you. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's so unusual, isn't it, that we fought a revolutionary war in order to deliver citizens from the tyranny of a monarchy that didn't respect their individual rights. We created this glorious, phenomenal experiment predicated on the fact that we would not submit again to the arbitrary power of someone else telling us what our freedoms are. We have an inherent right to speak, an inherent right to gather, an inherent right to worship, that these, these are God-given rights, a government doesn't grant them. They must be protected by the government. That's the uniqueness of America. And here we've gone full circle and departed from our original thesis, and now we're back under the rule of a monarchy that arbitrarily has the power to, in various ways, silence you, uh, defund you, um, quarantine you, or even lock you up if you dissent. And so the, uh, the, the moment that we're in right now, I'm, I'm looking up something I read in Hitler's Table Talks. It's from the pastors that met with Hitler as he began to clamp down on their freedoms. And there was one meeting where Niemöller and the other pastors were meeting with Hitler early on in the evolution of him becoming a dictator. And at first he sounded like he was championing freedom in the church and Christianity. And then gradually the mask came off and they spoke to him about some of the things he was doing politically. And he turned on them in fury and scared them. He said, you 
are responsible for what happens in the church. I am responsible for what happens in the government. You pay attention to your area and I'll pay attention to mine and stay out of my backyard. And at that moment, you have the nature of what real fascism is, whether it's on the left or on the right. It's when government tells the church, you stay in your lane. You don't have the authority to comment on what I'm doing. Bam. Todd. Yeah. What is your take on this? Just to piggyback on what Lance is saying, you know, uh, with the Danbury Baptists, for instance, you know, when they were said when they said that, you know, this whole lie about separation of church and state, a lot of Christians have bought into this. And I think that's what's got us to where we are right now. But that was a letter saying that the the government was going to stay out of the church's business, not vice versa. So if you look at the Continental Congress, all the all the people in the initial stages of our country, our founders, they were very, very comfortable with praying and speaking the word of God right there in the Congress. It was there was no separation there. And so this is where I think this lie has now metastasized. It's a cancer and it's now being repeated in denominations and by Christian leaders where the church has to stay out of politics. But we're going to talk about this a little bit more as it comes up. But these matters are spiritual matters. And and the whole fight that we're in is a spiritual battle of light versus darkness for our country. And so for a pastor not to get involved, why do you think it is that the World Economic Forum and some of these globalist organizations are honing in on pastors and the church? Because to, to both of your point, thank you, by the way, both you gentlemen have stood in the last few years. And, and, and thank you, because not many leaders were speaking out the things that you did about this in Romans 13. You were both on the forefront here. But let's just say this, okay? What they've been able to do is they've realized, okay, look, there's a small group of Christian pastors that are speaking out. There's a small group of Christian leaders. But if we can, you know, uh, alienate them and then and then try to convince the rest of the church to remain silent, we're going to take this thing home because they don't realize how far along it already is. But see, this is this is history repeating itself. It's exactly what Bonhoeffer was dealing with. And we've all vowed never to let that happen again. But yet here we are. So we have to go the other direction. We have to get involved, understand the spiritual battle, and then pull down the strongholds and use the tools that the Word of God has given us. So so it's a deception, and we have to have the discernment to understand where we are and how we fight this battle. And they, so far, Mario, they've been effective in their campaign to keep the church silent. You watch the double, the two-tiered thing. The very crimes that Biden committed with classified material he's getting off the hook is what they're going after Trump for. But here's the hilarious part and why I bring it up right at this moment and why it is in context. Biden is not supposed to be convicted of doing what Trump did because he's mentally elderly and unable to remember. So the, the, you have to ask the question, you just said that Biden is mentally incompetent to stand trial for breaking the law, but he's mentally competent to remain in office as the the leader of the free world. So here's how it works. We are going to use his mental incompetence when it suits us. We're going to deny it when it threatens us. That, That speaks to what is happening right now inside the church. We're being told this. We can be stupid and silly, but we can't be scriptural. That'll offend people and alienate them. So if I'm going to preach a true gospel of repentance, I'm going to alienate the modern mind. Also, the problem is that that reminds me of when I was in high school and they said, "We're we're not going to flunk anybody anymore. I went back to my high school years and years later and saw the San Francisco philosophy. We're going to socially promote people that can't do math, can't read, can't do anything. And we're going to graduate them. And so I asked them and I said, why? They said, because it will injure their self-confidence if we flunk them. And then I go, well, so after they graduate and they enter the job market and find out that nobody can hire them, what's going to happen to their self-concept then? The same thing applies to preaching the gospel. If I don't tell you to repent right from the top, the active ingredient of your conversion isn't going to happen. You're not going to get your miracle. So it's impossible to make any sense out of punting a football, doing a commercial on the Super Bowl that merely stops at he gets us because you're not going to see the transformation. You're not going to see the power. 
Why does that apply to everything else we're talking about? Because the church cannot be just aware that they're after our silence. It's what they don't want us to say. It's not that they don't want us to talk. They don't want us to say anything that will take the devil off of America, that will save you from your sins, that will transform you and remove the, the addiction. And that's what we're championing on this show. We are after a moment, a reformation, a miracle in America that will truly save us. And, and prophets of God should be warning, warning people of what's coming. So that leads me to the, the next question here. In this hour that we're in, Lance, I really believe that we have to be willing to put our reputations on the line, that we cannot now any longer play nice, that the evil has gotten so pervasive and so deep that we have got to have a very clear message and a very bold message for America. Yeah, you remember that scene in Tombstone where, um, where one of the, uh, the cowboy guys is drunk and he's mouthing off and he's, and he's basically he's so, he's so aggressive in his defiance that he backs right into Wyatt Earp and smacks into him and he turns around and Earp just whacks him with his hat or not, you know, knocks him out. I really feel like what's happening is the devil is becoming so aggressive and brazen in his pushing on the righteous who are reluctant to draw the sword, who are conscientious about, about uh, civil disobedience, who are thinking about how to be to take, you know, do what is noble in the sight of all. And the enemy's pu really pushing us to the point where we have to turn around and strike back, and God is in it. The, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the left and the, the, the woke commercials, for instance, on the Super Bowl, I had to really stop and process, what is it about this that is a problem? And I realized something. A half a truth is an entire error. The half that they have is they want to present a Jesus that says, uh, neither do I condemn you. I get you. But they don't like the other part of the sentence, which is, therefore, go and sin no more. The neither do I condemn you that Jesus spoke to the woman caught in adultery was attached to go and sin no more. If the church isn't willing to talk about sin, it presents another Jesus than the Jesus of the Bible. It's the woke Jesus that the silent church ends up promoting by accident. Now, I, I want to tell you, that is so important what you've just heard. And I want to build on it. This lie of a palatable gospel, this lie of a friendly gospel, this lie of a comfortable gospel is predicated on the idea that that's not what people want. People are scared of that. There's only one demographic that is scared of the preaching of repentance. There's only one demographic that truly doesn't appreciate it. And that is the compromised, lukewarm Christian. Because the average citizen outside is terrified. Their life is in shambles. Their money's no good. They can't buy a house. They don't have a future. They're constantly being pulled into gratuitous immorality. And they're scared to death of what's going to happen to their kids. You know what they do? When they hear a pure gospel, when they hear a complete gospel, they run to the altar and they are dramatically converted. So the last lie that we need to kill is that we should be blunting the, the idea of speaking out, speaking out against what's going on in our culture right now, because they want to hear it. The lukewarm don't want to hear it. The religious leader who's maybe living off of a false ministry, they don't want to hear it. But the average American, they want to hear it. That's why our altars overflow in our tent. Now, so Todd, this, yeah. is, this is the hour we're in. This is the hour yes. we're in. Yes. And Christians are being made to feel like they should feel weak and helpless and there's nothing we can do about what's going on. And, and that, that really that 
we should present a gospel that doesn't cost anybody anything because, and I believe that young people are not responding to our preaching because we've made it too easy to be a Christian. If we told them what was really going to be involved and the power they would know and the fact that they would be a hero for truth and not just look for a groovy feeling, they would be transformed. So speak to that, my friend. Yeah, well, when I came out of the world, I was a Hollywood actor. I was messed up. I was partying. I was drinking. I was doing some drugs. You know, when I came out of the world, there was a gentleman that was willing to tell me the truth. And he told me the hard truth. And listen, it, there was times when I put my tail between my legs and I left that meeting like, wow, you know, but you know what? If he didn't speak that truth to me, Mario, if he would have just washed my feet, if you just wash feet and then you don't talk about repentance, you don't talk about the gospel message, then you're just kind of like a weird person that just washed feet. There's no point. Why would you wash the feet if there's no message? You know, so the whole thing is that's what they've done. They've taken away that whole, that's what set me up for success. And that's why I've had longevity in my walk with Jesus Christ. There's another layer, fear of the Lord. And what we're seeing this common theme throughout the show, there's not a fear. I mean, if you're willing to kick a Bible, you know, in a Sunday service and there's no fear of the Lord, that that just doesn't, like Lance said, you don't even think about how that's like, you know, totally blasphemous and horrible to do. There's something wrong with you. And, and what's wrong is they're not spending time in the secret place. And so what's happening, I think the Lord is using this time Because what we're seeing now is those that are spending time in the word of God and those that are on fire for the Lord. And this this is the only way we're going to make it in the days and weeks and months and years ahead is we have to be on fire for the Lord. We got to be in his word. We got to know what the word says and we got to speak the truth boldly like the apostle Paul did. And so what, what this is doing essentially is exposing the weak sauce, soy boy, fake version, emasculated version of of the of the gospel it's not the gospel message there's two different messages and so i think that the lord is using this and i'm thankful because it's actually developing a conversation i've seen a lot of people on posts the last couple of days on social media having this difficult conversation it's a conversation that needed to be had because now what it's doing is it's bringing to light what's actually been happening for many many years here in the western church where where they haven't been teaching and preaching the full bible mario all right we're gonna have to stop right there put the brakes on We're about to get into something really very interesting, as though that wasn't interesting to begin with. I had so many ah ahas that came out of this. I got notes I was taking while this broadcast was going on. But we're going to have to do part two tomorrow. I don't want you to get it all at one time because, you know, it's it's like a a big meal. This is a lot of meat on that menu. So we're going to go with tomorrow. I want you to watch uh, part two. And don't forget the cooling technology on the pillow that Mike has just come out with. Go to MyPillow.com, use promo code Lance. You get uh, like up to 40% off of his products. I still wear his slippers around the house. Let's support Mike Lindell and, uh, and stand together because God's doing something big in the body of Christ and he's doing it through unity. We'll see you again tomorrow. Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends. Because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world.